Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Anatomy by Dr. Vijaya. Today's session will be the development of central nervous system. So this will be the last part of CNS development. So here in this session I will be talking about the development of prosencephalon which includes telin and diencephalon. So mainly I will be covering the development of cerebral hemispheres, thalamus, hypothalamus, pituitary gland and the clinical aspects related to the development. Let us know about the development of prosencephalon which is also called as Ford brain. So in my previous video I had shown this picture uh, the different vesicles, brain vesicles or the dilatation, forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain and we, we had already learnt the development of the mesencephalon and the rhombencephalon. Forebrain that is a prosencephalon divides into two lateral uh, or pocketing that is the telencephalon which later develops into the cerebral hemispheres so it mainly gives rise to the gray matter area of the cerebral hemisphere which is called a cerebral cortex then it also gives rise to the white matter of the cerebral area and the basal nuclei which includes caudate nucleus uh, putamen lentiform nucleus so the globus pallidus so all those where will be the basal nuclei so these develop from telencephalon and that there is a median region called as the diencephalon which mainly gives rise to the optic cup so i had shown in my previous video the optic uh, there will be two outgrowths so which will later form the optic uh, vesicles so the mainly diencephalon will gives rise to thalamus hypothalamus epithalamus and it also gives contribution for the development of pituitary gland and also to the optic cup so ventricles as i mentioned earlier in my video there are dif due to the uh, differential growth of uh, the brain vesicles so uh, the cavity of the developing neural tube also gets organized so there will be two lateral ventricles within the telencephalon one third ventricle within diencephalon and one fourth ventricle within metencephalon and all these are interconnected so interventricular foramen which is also called as foramen of munro lies between it connects lateral ventricle to the third ventricle then cerebral aqueduct or aqueduct of sylvius connects third to the fourth ventricles and the fourth ventricle can uh, it's connected to the spinal cord by a central a narrow central canal if you can uh, remember the gross uh, feature of the cerebral hemisphere on the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere white matter at the medial uh, surface so that's the uh, corpus callosum so below the cor corpus callosum there is a, a structure called a lamina terminalis so this represents the rostral end of the neural tube cavity okay so further uh, these telencephalon will have a differential growth so they expand and now let us learn the development of diencephalon so as i mentioned the lumen within the diencephalon will develop uh, into third ventricle so the part which is around the third ventricle forms the diencephalon so in the diencephalon there are different gray matter uh, masses the gray masses so that mainly develops from the diencephalon which are thalamus hypothalamus then there is epithalamus and the epithalamus mainly includes the pineal gland or the epiphysis and the subthalamus so these gray masses the gray matter develops in the diencephalon and the cavity within the diencephalon will be third ventricle so if you can see in this picture so uh, they say that um, the diencephalon mainly has a well developed roof plate and alar plate it has floor and the uh, the basal plate but they are not very well developed the roof plate okay so this is a section mainly showing the medial surface of the developing telencephalon and the diencephalon okay so here you can see this is the roof plate of the uh, this is a developing cerebral hemisphere from the telencephalon 
so this is the roof plate okay so the roof plate and the lateral this is the lateral wall so you're seeing the medial aspect so the lateral wall of the diencephalon will be the alar plate so these two plates are very well developed in diencephalon so in the roof plate so it mainly you will be seeing a single layer of ependymal cells which along with that the ependymal cells there will be development of vascular mesenchyme okay so you know that vascular mesenchyme mainly gives rise to the blood vessels okay so this roof plate mainly they will be lined by ependymal cells so it mainly lines the third ventricle along with that there will be development of vascular mesenchyme which gives rise to so both together will give rise to choroid plexus so these choroid plexus are tiny capillaries within the ventricles which can which are uh, which you you can see even in the lateral ventricle fourth ventricle and also in the third ventricle so they mainly secrete csf cerebrospinal fluid so that are developed in the roof plate so here you can see the choroid plexus at the caudal part of roof plate of the diencephalon so there will be uh, evagination so you can see uh, initially there will be a thickening so that's called as a pineal thickening which later evaginates further giving rise to the pineal gland okay so you can see in this picture the evagination okay so this evagination will later develop into pineal gland or also called as epiphysis so it mainly here the developing mesencephalon is seen here so after evagination so this pineal gland will form the roof of the mesencephalon and it mainly uh, the the cells which are present in this epithalamus pineal gland is mainly the part of epithalamus so they have a connection with the mesencephalon mainly with the colliculus and there will be um, the the light uh, and the darkness affect the endocrine uh, function of this gland okay so the circadian rhythm it's mainly controlled through these glands so this gland forms a part of the epithalamus you already know what is epithalamus epi means at the top okay so it's on the roof so the pineal gland is a part of the epithalamus so that's about the roof plate of the diencephalon so cranially there will be ependymal lining along with the vascular mesenchyme which gives rise to choroid plexus and the caudal part will thickens to form which later undergoes evagination giving rise to the pineal gland now coming to the alar plate so the alar plate forms the lateral wall of the diencephalon also the lateral wall of the third ventricle so here there will be development of two main gray masses so one is thalamus and hypothalamus so there will be a formation of a sulcus okay it's a very ill-defined sulcus which you can see over here which divides the alar plate into two regions the dorsal region and the ventral region so dorsal upper region and ventral lower region so the dorsal upper region uh, there will be development of thalamus so there will be development of different nuclei over there okay so this gives rise to uh, thalamus and the ventral uh, lower part again there will be development of different nuclei so that forms the hypothalamus so this line which is separating the thalamus from the hypothalamus so that will be called as hypothalamic sulcus so in the thalamus what happens there will be proliferation of these uh, cells the nuclei so there will be further inward growth of these gray masses so they go towards the lumen of the third ventricle so at certain uh, at one particular area the the growth is uh, so much that there will be formation of interthalamic connexus so you have a connection at the um, uh, caudal aspect okay so that's called as an interthalamic uh, connexus okay so uh, but uh, there will be two thalamus lying on either side of the third ventricle this is due to the proliferation of the nuclei within the thalamus the same in the hypothalamus there will be development of different nuclei and these nuclei have a control over uh, so they mainly have a control over the visceral functions of our body like sleep 
digestion, endocrine functions and all those are mainly controlled through hypothalamus. Then, the, this is the floor of the diencephalon. So, near to the uh, floor, if you can see over here, there is one more. This is the hypothalamus. So, there will be one more evagination. Okay. So, this evagination which will later form the part of the pituitary gland. And at the caudal aspect, you can see there will be development of one more nuclear mass. So, that is called as the mammillary body which has a connection with the limbic system. Okay. So, there is mammillary body and this is a small evagination. Okay. So, be, there will be downward growth. Okay. So, that later forms the, uh, the future uh, posterior part of the pituitary gland. So, let us know about the development of the pituitary gland which has connection with the hypothalamus. So, pituitary gland mainly develops from two different parts. So, those two different part is one contribution is from the ectodermal uh, outgrowth, okay, Ecto ectodermal outgrowth, the ec uh, ectodermal evagination near the stomodium, okay. So, stomodium is the uh, the future oral cavity, okay. So, the uh, near to the future or uh, oral cavity, that is near to the oropharyngeal membrane, there will be a small outpocketing, okay. So, there will be small evagination of a pouch called as rat case pouch. So, at around third week of embryonic development, so this rat case pouch uh, develops, uh, there will be formation of this rat case pouch near the stomodium and this rat case pouch evaginates and moves towards the dorsal aspect. So, if you see this is a developing embryo. So, this is the ventral aspect of the developing embryo and this is a dorsal aspect. So, this rat case pouch evaginates and moves, uh, grows towards the dorsal aspect of the embryo and it comes in contact with one more structure as I mentioned earlier at the floor of the diencephalon. There will be one more downward growth so, that is called as the infundibulum. So, this blue color structure represents the part of the diencephalon that is the infundibulum and this is the rat case pouch. So, at the end of second month of embryonic development, so this rat case pouch will lose the connection with the stomodium, okay, which is the ectoderm part, okay. So, they lose the connection and they uh, gets attached, they get attached with the infundibulum. So, this rat case pouch mainly gives rise to the adenohypophysis or the anterior pituitary gland. Okay. So, you know that pituitary gland has uh, two main parts adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis. Adenohypophysis is the anterior pituitary gland. Neurohypophysis is the posterior pituitary gland. which is also called as uh, the posterior one pars nervosa. Okay. So, this uh, anterior pituitary gland or the anterior lobe mainly develops from the rat case pouch. Okay, so there will be development of different uh, cells over there where it uh, uh, once it gets the stimulus from the hypothalamus, there will be secretion of hormones. Okay, and this rat case pouch they form a small surround, they surround a small part surrounds around the stalk of the infundibulum. So, this is a stalk, this is the infundibulum, this is a small stalk. So, a, a small part of rat case pouch, they surround around the stalk of the um, uh, infund, the stalk of the infundibulum. So, that forms a pars tuberalis. Okay. So, here you can see. So, this forms a pars tuberalis. And the posterior wall of the rat case pouch will uh, differentiate to form pars intermedia. So, you pituitary gland has different parts parts, the parts tubula, tubula, uh, tuberalis, anterior lobe, parts intermedia and parts nervosa. Okay. So, this is uh, the posterior wall of the rat case pouch forms the parts intermedia. Then parts nervosa, it is a direct, uh, it has a direct connection with the hypothalamus. Okay. Which you can see here. So, it is a downward growth of the floor of the diencephalon. So, it has a direct connection. So, here there will be development of neuroglial cells. Along with that, you will be seeing the axon fibers which are coming from the hypothalamus. So, you know that pars nervosa does not secrete but it stores the hormones which are uh, secreted in the hypothalamus that is oxytocin and ADH. Okay. So, those hormones which are secreted here, they come, they 
travel through the axon fibers and the axon terminals which are present in the mars pars nervosa so the uh, they mainly store the uh, to store these two hormones that is the uh, oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone okay so this is the development of pituitary gland which mainly develops from two parts the one is rathkes pouch the other one is from the infundibulum rathkes pouch is developing from the stomodium and infundibulum from the floor of the diencephalon coming to the development of telencephalon so telencephalon as i mentioned these are the two out pocketings which is a part of the prosencephalon okay so which later develops into the cerebral hemispheres so the two evagination will form the hemispheres and at the uh, midline that forms the rostral most end of the neural tube so that is the lamina terminalis so the cavity enclosed by the telencephalon uh, will develop into lateral ventricle so here you can see this is the developing corpus callosum okay so the telen a part of the so here you're seeing the medial surface of the developing telencephalon and this is the developing diencephalon okay for section is a transfer section is taken over here this dotted line and if it is turned so this is how it looks where you can see so this is a developing third ventricle the gray mass as i mentioned the thalamus there will be uh, proliferation and uh, it move towards the lumen so this is the thalamus okay uh, near the base of this developing telencephalon okay so this is the base so there will be development of a one more uh, structure a gray mass okay so there will be evagination so this uh, is near the base of the developing telencephalon so this a uh, mass which will, uh, it will uh, uh, protrude uh, into the lateral ventricle and also to the foramen of munro the uh, the interventricular foramen so this has a striated appearance and this structure will be called as corpus striatum okay so this is the part of the basal nuclei so this structure has a striated appearance and it protrudes into the developing lateral ventricle so this is a lateral ventricle and also protrudes into the foramen of munro and this structure is called as corpus striatum and uh, near the base so this part so there are no neuroblast and it has a thin lining the ependymal cells okay which also has the development of vascular mesenchyme which gives rise to choroid plexus so this choroid plexus also protrudes into the developing lateral ventricle so you, here you can see which passes through the fissure over here which is called as a choroid fissure so this is a third ventricle so here you can see the small plexus this as the development occurs as the expansion of the hemisphere occurs there will be a uh, protrusion of the choroid plexus into the lateral ventricle as i mentioned earlier choroid plexus their main function is to secrete cerebrospinal fluid corpus striatum so this corpus striatum there will be more and more proliferation and there will be formation this will uh, expand um, dorsally okay so it expands more and more and later what happens there will be development of axon fibers over here which separates the corpus striatum into two uh, masses so that the one which is lying dorso medially will be the caudate nucleus and ventrolaterally there will be lentiform nucleus and the fibers which separates these two nuclei will form the internal capsule so there is due to the further uh, expansion of this corpus striatum and in between there will be uh, to and fro uh, movement of the uh, axon fibers so these uh, axon fibers the bundle will be called the internal capsule and it separates the corpus striatum into two nuclei so one near the medial aspect will be caudate nucleus and the other on the lateral aspect will be called as lentiform nucleus so the expansion of the uh, telencephalon that is which forms the cerebral hemisphere will be 
more and more so it covers uh, the mesen cephalon it covers the dian cephalon and also the cephalic portion of the meten cephalon so the expansion is more due to the uh, uh, more and more uh, migration of the new uh, neurons development of the neurons so the cortex expands rapidly so both anteriorly and it expands uh, inferiorly and dorsally okay and this leads to the development of frontal temporal and the tem uh, the parietal lobes okay and once it uh, expands inferiorly so that forms the temporal lobe and uh, posteriorly it expands to form occipital lobe so this is due to the uh, development of new group of neurons which migrates throughout and there will be expansion so as the expansion occurs so it covers the uh, laterally the the hemisphere covers the dian cephalon laterally and also mesen cephalon and also it covers part of the cephalic portion of the meten cephalon so initially it will be a smooth surface okay so since there is the space within the cranial cavity is limited and there is more and more expansion of the hemisphere and the due to the development of neuroblast which will lead into nerves uh, the neuro uh, the nerve cells so there will be formation of foldings okay which lead and you will be seeing the surface on the surface of the hemisphere you will be seeing the sulci and the gyri so this is due to the folding and uh, this accumulates more and more nerve cells okay so the surface of the brain shows sulci and gyri due to the rapid growth of the cortex within a limited space that is within the limited space in the cranial cavity due to the expansion of the hemisphere so even the lateral ventricle the lumen within the telian cephalon also uh, undergoes expansion so they they, they will have uh, horns the, the which will extend to the frontal the temporal and the occipital lobe so those horns will be called as anterior horn inferior horn and posterior horns okay respectively so this is how at the end of fetal life so you will be seeing the cerebral surface will have foldings okay so those will be called as sulci and gyri so as these expansion occurs uh, there will be a, a formation of frontal temporal and parietal and occipital lobe so the lobe which is formed initially will be covered by the frontal and the temporal lobe so that lobe will be called as insular cortex okay so there will be a small cortex which which is first to develop but, uh, but due to the development of uh, expansion of other uh, lobes so the, there will be uh, insula which is hidden within the frontal and the temporal lobes so along with the development of these masses which you can see over here uh, this is the developing thalamus and this is the caudate nucleus so near to the medial surface over here there will be formation one more gray mass which later develops into hippocampus so this is related this hippocampus will be related to the limbic system and they are very well developed in animals which is related to the olfactory uh, system okay for olfaction for smell so this is the area where the hippocampus develops <coughs> and it it also expands uh, uh, towards the lumen that is the lumen of the lateral ventricle so as there is formation of nerve cells the processes which are developing from these nerve cells which form the axon fiber so the cerebral the developing cell there will be two hemispheres so they are interconnected the nerve cells are connected so the developing cerebrum gets connected to the brain stem and also to the developing spinal cord by a group of fibers that is a projection fibers which is called as the internal capsule which mainly separates the corpus striatum into caudate nucleus and lentiform nucleus along with that there will be a uh, formation of axon fibers which connects one hemisphere to the other hemisphere that is right and left so these are called as commissural uh, fibers so a very good example uh, is the corpus callosum which connects the major part of right hemisphere with the left hemisphere and there will be also association fibers so these are the axon fibers which are connecting the nerve cells or the lobes within the hemispheres okay so there will be development of white matter okay so which are which are nothing but the axon fibers of the 
nerve cells which are present in the cerebral cortex. So here you can see the insula. So to the further expansion of the hemisphere. So this insula will be covered by the frontal and the temporal lobe. Okay. And here you can see these are the different commissures which are developing. Okay. So commissures which connects the two hemispheres. The corpus callosum. Then you see habenular commissure, posterior commissure. Okay. Then you will see anterior commissures. So these are the commissures which connects the axon fibers connecting the two hemispheres. So here you can see the development of so the section is taken over here. The medial surface. This is foramen of Munro. Okay. So here you can see the formation of hippocampus, which will protrude within the lateral ventricle. So this is the lateral ventricle. Okay. So this is the hippocampus. Now coming to the development of the meninges. Okay. So the mesenchyme, a layer of mesoderm which is surrounding the neural tube. So they conduct, uh, condense to form the membrane uh, around the spi developing spinal cord and the brain. So that's called has the meninges. So the external layer will form the dura matter and the internal layer is from the uh, form the pia matter and the arachnoid matter. So together they are called as leptomeninges, pia and the arachnoid. Not, uh, there is no, uh, not only contribution of the mesenchyme. Okay, so these leptomeninges will get the contribution from the neural crest cells which migrate throughout the body. So with, uh, with the stimulus or with the contribution from the neural crest cells and the mesenchyme, there will be development of pia matter and the arachnoid matter and the outermost is the dura matter. So by during fifth week of embryonic development, there will be secretion of CSF, the cerebrospinal fluid which are mainly secreted by the choroid plexus which are developing within the ventricles. So along with that there will be formation of cranial nerves. So uh, the other from 3rd to 12th I have already told in the development of the mesenchephalon and the rhombenchephalon. The other two that is the first olfactory mainly develops within the telencephalon near the nasal. So they mainly innervate the nasal epithelium. As I mentioned, these develop in the telin higher center, the telin and dian. Optic mainly develops from the dian kephalon. So they are uh, in relation to vision. Okay. So olfactory and optic, they develop from telin and dian kephalon respectively. The rest of them will develop from the brain stem. The nuclei are present in the brain stem. So this uh, table summarizes the cranial nerve where the, the region where they are present and they are categorized under which type okay and innovates which area factory and uh, so these are special afferent why because they are they are special sensation so vision smell hearing and balance they are and taste sensation are characterized under sa that is special afferent okay then se is General somatic efferent, okay, oculomotor because it supplies eyeball muscles, trochlear also eyeball muscles, oculomotor along with uh, so general somatic efferent, it is also categorized under general visceral efferent, as you can remember, it has parasympathetic innervation, okay, mainly supplying the sphincter pupillae the, through the ciliary ganglion, so that is mainly a nuclei, nucleus which is present in the mesencephalon. That's the Edinga Vespal nucleus. Okay. So they have the parasympathetic innervation. So oculomotor have, has two types of uh, function. One, one, uh, one is somatic efferent. The other one is general visceral efferent. Okay. Uh, so this table will summarize the origin of the cranial nerves and their composition. coming to some of the clinical aspects related to the development of uh, prosencephalon so non fusion of the sutures of the cranial uh, ca cavity is very common okay so if it can be partial or complete uh, so if there is a lack of fusion so which is very common on the squamous part of the occipital bone so that leads to different condition so which you can see over here as i mentioned squamous part of the occipital bone is very common so if there is a non-fusion 
it can be complete or incomplete so that leads to protrusion of the meninges so if the it depends upon the uh, space so if the space is very limited so there might be just the protrusion of the meninges so that's called as meningocele sometimes there can be along with the meninges there will be protrusion of the brain tissue so that condition is called as meningoencephalocele and uh, sometimes there can be a uh, protrusion of uh, the ventricular lumen as well along with meninges and the brain tissue so that condition is called as meningohydroencephalocele so there are these are different types uh, you know, whenever there is lack of fusion of the uh, cranial sutures so here here you can see occipital meningoencephalocele okay so from the occipital region if there is non closure of the cephalic uh, that is the cranial neuropore so i had already mentioned in my previous video about the cranial and the caudal neuropores cranial neuropore usually closes by 25th day so if it doesn't close so it leads to a condition called as anencephaly okay and if the fusion if the non fusion extends even to the cranial part of the spinal cord okay so this is you can see if it extends from the rostral part until it extends to the, uh, the spinal cord area so that condition is called as anencephaly with craniorachygesis okay so these are different condition uh, abnormalities which can occur during the development of central nervous system there is one more condition where the cranial vault will be smaller when uh, as compared to the normal okay so this uh, definitely it might be due to underlying defect in the development of the brain so that leads to a condition called as microcephaly so this can be uh, the causes can be genetic or it can be external like uh, exposure prenatal exposure to any drugs or teratogens okay or any infection during prenatal period so that might lead to a condition called as there can be underlying brain uh, tissue defect so this can lead to a condition called as microcephaly so, so the infant uh, born with microcephaly definitely will have intellectual disability there is one more condition called as hydrocephalus so this is due to accumulation of a uh, cerebrospinal fluid within the uh, ventricles so congenitally the uh, uh, it's very common that uh, there will be obstruction in the aqueduct of sylvius so that's called as uh, uh, aqueduct stenosis so which is very common uh, which is a common congenital defect so whenever there is obstruction in the aqueduct of sylvius so the cerebrospinal fluid from the ventricle lateral and the third ventricle doesn't pass to the a fourth and from fourth it has to go to the subarachnoid space where the absorption takes place through the arachnoid uh, villi so since this uh, flow is obstructed due to the stenosis so more and more flu uh, cerebrospinal fluid which are secreted in the lateral and the third ventricle it gets accumulated and due to this accumulation the ventricles are expanded and it compresses on the brain tissue and since in babies the sutures have not fused yet so there will be widening of the space due to the compression due, due to the widening of the lumen this will uh, affect the brain tissue and also there will be expansion of the uh, so, uh, since the sutures have not closed or not fused so there will be widening of the spaces and there will be expansion of the head uh, region so that condition is called as hydrocephalus this completes the development of central nervous system thank you for watching